In this exercise, we're gonna see how to set up this simple button. The interaction of the button is when we hover over it, it'll light up, and when we click on it, it'll actually bounce. Let's look at the different animations that make up this button. The first animation is the idle state. This will keep our button just in its, well, idle state. Then we have the clicked animation, which is gonna create that bounce. Next, we've got two different animations that change our color. The first one is in its non-hovered state, so it keeps the button blue. And then we've got the hovered animation, which changes our button to a purple color. Now let's go back to the state machine and start setting things up. Let's start with a little bit of housekeeping first. The first thing that we're gonna do is rename our layer so that it's easy for us to understand what's going on. And then let's get rid of this uh, any and exit state because we'll just be using the entry state. Now the first animation we're gonna start with is the not hovered animation. And we'll hook that to the entry state so that we start where our button is blue. Now, once again, if we look at the not hovered state, you can see that we've keyed the color here. And then the other state that we're gonna use is the next state is the hovered animation. And we're gonna hook our not um, hovered state to that so that when we hover the button, we go to, the, um, we go to that uh, hovered state and it'll change our button to purple. Now let's create a listener by selecting our button and then hitting the plus button in the listeners panel and we'll make sure that the listener action that we're looking for is the pointer interaction. Now we need to set an input, but we don't have one. So we're gonna create a Boolean and let's call this button hover. Now we're gonna use this Boolean to control our transition, but we're also gonna use the listener to control this input. So let's go ahead and change the name of our listener and call it button hover. And um, we're gonna make sure that our Boolean goes to true. And we need to create one more so we'll select the button and then call this one button exit. And on a pointer exit action, we're gonna make sure that this Boolean goes back to false. Now, when we play the state machine, forget the color of the button, just pay attention to the Boolean. You can see that as we mouse in and out, uh, the Boolean is turning on and turning off. So now we need to make sure that our transition is set up correctly. Now we didn't add a condition before, so we're gonna add that now and we'll have this transition happen when the Boolean is true. Now we need to make another transition that can go back to the off state when that condition is false. Now let's test out the state machine and make sure all that's working. So as you can see, when we mouse over, we go purple, and when we mouse out, we go back to the correct state. So our button is changing colors just like we want. Now we can add a little bit of duration to these transitions so that it's not snapping between the colors. It's actually smoothly going from one to the next. As you can see, that duration made a world of difference and you can mess with that number to get it looking exactly how you want it to. And you can also give it a little interpolation if you want as well. Now let's add a new layer so that we can add in the click interactivity. Now for the click interaction, we're gonna be using the idle and click animations. The idle animation is gonna keep our button in its normal state, and then the click will actually add that bounce in. So now let's go back to the state machine and drag that idle animation on and hook it to the entry state. Let's also move the any state out of our way, and let's also add in the click animation. Remember, this one is gonna make that little bounce. So let's drag the click state onto the graph and create a transition between the idle and click state. And then we can go ahead and create a second transition to go from clicked back to idle. We'll also need an input to control this. So we're gonna use a trigger and let's call this um, button click. And then we can add these as a condition. So when the uh, click happens, we wanna make sure that our uh, button click trigger fires. And then when we go back, we wanna make sure that we wait until the entire clicked animation has happened. So to do that, we're gonna to need to enable our exit time and then type in 100%. So it'll play the full animation before going back to idle. Just like with the hover interactivity, we're gonna need a listener so that this will work on the stage. So let's select the button, create a new listener, and change the name of our listener. 
Now we can go in and change the listener action from pointer inner to pointer down, and we'll make sure that that fires off our trigger. Now let's test our state machine and see if it works. So the hovering works, and then when we click on the button, you can see that the bounce plays and we go back to the idle animation. Now this is the, one of the most simple interactions that you can create, but what you'll find as you work with the state machine more is that oftentimes complex state machines are just a bunch of simple interactions stacked on top of each other.